very interesting session now. We are going to go through the uh, examination pattern. I'm sure the class 12 students are getting an opportunity to see the videos of the speakers that last time we prepared. In case any of you want, again, we can share it with all of you if you don't have the videos. It's available in our YouTube, right, Meena? Uh, the KTPI class 12, almost all the sessions we conducted with uh, different speakers. Those videos also can be shared with you in case you don't have them. It's in our YouTube, CCT Education Cell uh, uh, YouTube. If you go and ask for the KTPI sessions, class 12, every chapter that... Uh, whether it is agriculture or ethics or the or the dance, our uh, dance forms and the uh, colour, the martial art, everything we have already. Please take a look at the, those uh, things. They really help you to uh, go beyond textbooks and take the exam very, very beautifully. It will give a really uh, amazing help to you. So today we are going to have a session where we are going to handle by our own teachers, three teachers who have been having a lot of experience in handling KTPI. So let us today start the program with a small prayer by Kavya from class seven from the Chinmaya Vidyalaya Katakada. Uh, we'll have the prayer and then we can start. <laughs> Padmajarchita Papa Vimochana Padmanabha Murahar Mahadava Padmajarchita Papa Vimochana Padmanabha Murahar Thank you, Kavya, and thanks to the CV Katakada for sending forwarding us this recording. Uh, and today we are going to go through, as I already spoke to you about it, we are going to have a session which is really, really going to be practically, uh, you know, to help you to take the board examination coming up in March 2024. And... Uh, there's one thing which I would like to brief before we start the program. There's been a very uh, strong foundation to assessments. The background for assessment of in conducting in any pay, uh, subject, whether it is mathematics, science, or English, or social science, or uh, physics, chemistry, or KTPI, there's been the fundamental basic structure has been provided by Bloom's taxonomy. I don't know whether the students are aware, but all the teachers sitting here are clearly aware of it because we have gone through it during the, our beard. Um, program when we go through the bachelors in education anytime you talk about assessment blue's taxonomy plays a very big role and uh, it's very clearly he learning and learning of a, a student learning in the teaching learning process he demarks it with six levels he says one is the just a remembering level a recalling level what you capture back everything is important I would never appreciate anybody saying, I don't want to buy heart. I don't want to memorize. I tell you, it has a very, very beautiful role in our learning process. So the basic fundamental is about uh, recalling or remembering and then goes to the next step where you have understanding. You understand. And then comes the next step where we start applying it, applying it in real life. And then comes analyzing and then evaluating and then the highest topmost is the creating. So assessments, we have been all under in the education field, CBSC or any board, any IB curriculum or the IGCSE curriculum, they all talk about it, that a question paper should be uniformly handle all these avenues and areas. There will be some fundamental questions where you just got to recollect and write, uh, like we write a theorem or we define something in some maths and science like that. Or in K KTPI, you ask something, who wrote this? Who, who created this? The questions where we ask, where, who is it? Where is it done? And what is it? And those things come under the purview of the 
fundamental the lowest level of uh, you know learning style in a child is the learning by remembering or recalling and then the next style where you have some understanding is also there you are able to explain the definition where you are able to explain so that comes in the second level but when you go to the third level you start applying it when you are starting applying it what you have learned that comes as a third stage but the topmost levels are about evaluating when you're judging it when you're making a judgment based out of it i presume you understand whatever we learn in a school whether it is any subject or any value education or anything that we learn it depends on how we utilize it in the world outside when you go out how you apply it how you make judgment how are your decisions based on but the knowledge you need the knowledge so never rule out any possibility of you think it's a very low level assessment no that's important as well as so a question paper has a combination of all of this that is why when people only understand and recall they are able to ask question who did it what is this and where was it done you are able to immediately shoot the answers when one mark questions are given you are able to do it because you are able to recollect that's the easiest to low you know level of learning then as you grow higher you make a judgment that's why the reasoning and assessment uh, assertion uh, questions have come in now in the paper where are you able to understand the statement that is given in the assertion statement and in the reasoning statement what is the judgment you make this is the assertion is right but reasoning is wrong or the reason and assertion are uh, you know it is are um, embedded so beautifully it's both are correct so are you able to judge that that's where the higher order of thinking comes in and you will see that even even your five marks questions and two marks question there may be some questions based from textbook something beyond that that they are today the three speakers are going to take you through a uh, three lessons they are choosing three of the lessons today and they are going to take you one is the agriculture session on agriculture then one session on the uh, martial arts and third session lesson is going to be on the uh, ethics and ethics and practices in india these three lessons these three teachers have taken they have thoroughly gone through it and prepared giving you one mark questions and two marks questions and the five marks question to give you a pattern how the board is uh, uh, working on it how the, the the preparation of question paper is done on that because you need to understand you can't uh, discard remembering and recalling at the same time you cannot discard a value five marks question is where you explain things you make a judgment of things and you make also the uh, you know you create uh, new ideas and things like that which is taking you beyond the textbook when you take beyond the textbook that's where your higher order thinking skills pitch in and then you are uh, marked for it so all of them is a complete paper it is not i'm not talking about ktpi alone every subject that is a pattern now cbsc has brought in that pattern not just do at the uh, level of uh, recalling and remembering level but go to the higher level i'm not going to take much of your time so we have the three subject experts here who have been teaching ktpi for last so many years i'm very happy to introduce to you mrs jaya bharati she has done a masters in english and she conducts online english courses since 2015 onwards he is a head, head of the department from the social science department at amrita vidyalayam senior secondary school in nagapatnam she takes up various roles in the school completely contributing in a fantastic manner she is a skill hub coordinator cultural coordinators and she spent almost 12 years in the field of education she has received awards she is one of the prestigious award of teacher transforming india award she has received and she has been teaching ktpi since 2012 and she has a, to her credit her students producing centum in ktpi that's the credit we have jai bharti ma'am and she has published a book also so she's a uh, thinker and we have seen that uh, beautifully that she has been working in a very very many ways where well, she has published a book on the clash of ortho karana variants and vandalism in pedagogy uh, it is a beautiful book that she has published and she has been a speaker in many many forums she will be handling the lesson on agriculture and then we have mrs veena nayar uh, she has a masters uh, um, ma and mba she has been teaching in seven years Uh, you can show up you can say hi veena ma'am jai bharti ma'am so that they know uh, yeah you yeah, veena ma'am uh, she has conducted last year also when we had a question answer session uh, pre preparation for t children last year she uh, veena ma'am was also a part of the team which she conducted the session she has been teaching social science uh, for classes 9 and 12 9 and 10 and also been teaching ktpi 
last seven years she has been working in Arya Gurukul School Kalyan. It's one of our uh, vision school, and she's uh, got the Microsoft Innovative Education uh, Educator Certificate, and uh, she has been conducting sessions even for us Education Cell, and she has attended quite a number of workshops. She has conducted and uh, attended workshops in integrating art integration in social science, outcome based learning, innovative pedagogy in social science, and decoding and enrichment workshops. She has been a part of so many uh, sessions and seminars and uh, we welcome you also Vina ma'am uh, we're looking forward to your session and third we have uh, uh, Mrs. Swarna ma'am Swarna Dasarathi ma'am she has got 19 years of experience she's a postgraduate and also uh, an MBA and currently pursuing another postgraduation degree she is uh, continuing and she has been the head of the department in places and she has guided the, as a primary head she has been a, a head of activities she has coordinated a girls welfare committee she has been a coordinator for the Model United Nations program. She has been with the vice principal of an school earlier and now all not only that she has worked in many boards. She has been, uh, she is familiar with the CBSC board, ICSC board, IB board and the IGCSC board. That's our versatile uh, Swarna ma'am. Welcome you Swarna ma'am. Thanks for uh, joining in. So without taking much of your time, we'll start with the first speaker. Uh, Mrs. Jai Bharati ma'am will start the session now. She will be doing on agriculture culture. I request all of you to have a notebook and pen and uh, in the chat box you can write the answers or unmute and speak. Children who are sitting in a classroom situation, maybe one of you can have a mic and come forward and give the answers. We are expecting you to answer the questions also and then if you have doubts between two options, it will be clarified by the speakers. They will clarify that to you. Over to you Jai Bharti ma'am. Uh, you uh, share your PPT in case you have difficulty. Let me know. I can uh, share it for you. Yeah, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hari Om, ma'am. Om Namah Shivaya. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Let me share my PPT. Can you see the PPT, ma'am? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, this is the first slide. We are going to talk about the sample question paper, class 12, 2023-24. That is knowledge, traditions, and practices of India. The code number for this subject is 073. Time allotted for this paper is 3 hours, maximum marks 70 marks. So these are the general instructions given by the board. So the first point is board exam question paper contains four sections. Section 1 to 4. Section 1 has 16 questions carrying one marks each. Section 2 has 7 short answer type questions carrying 2 marks each. Section 3 has 4 descriptive type questions carrying 5 marks each. Section 4 has 4 descriptive type questions carrying 5 marks each. So one internal choice will be given there in question number 15. So board exam question paper contains the following types of competency based questions as follows. Type A, knowledge or understanding. Type B, application type questions. Type C, analysis or synthesis, higher order thinking skills. Type D, evaluation, higher order thinking skills. So we are going to see module one, that is agriculture. So first we can have some glance of one marks, different types of one marks, is there like picture-based questions, assertion reason, choose the best answer, master following. So from uh, this lesson, we have the weightage of 19% and marks allotted for this lesson is 10 marks. So here is a sample for picture-based question. So you can study the picture and answer the question that follows. So you just see the picture keenly. Which of the following options best signifies the given picture? So I have uh, fixed it here 20 seconds of time. So if you know the answer, you can post the answer in the chat box. Your time starts now. So not every part of India has its own dates and customs for the celebration. Agriculture was the base of stronger kingdoms. Cows were regarded as sacred animal. Festivals and rituals not only helped to bond local communities, but also promoted national integration. So time up, children, ma'am. Answers are there, ma'am. People are saying D, option D. Option D. Okay, let me check. Children, yes. say option D is the correct answer. 
Very good. So Festival Sandwich was not only helped to bond local communities, but also promoted national integration. So can you guess this picture, children? Study the picture and answer the question that follows. Based on the image, according to the text, option relates to the ancient granaries. Mega has many granaries suggesting a sophisticated collective management. Option B, granary is not playing a vital role of ensuring the safety of the crops. Option C, granaries are lined up with a clay to protect the seeds from dampness and insects. Option D, granaries were the only indicators for the practice of good agriculture in the ancient period. Options they have given. If anyone know the answer, you come and answer me. You can unmute your mic and you can say the answer. Yeah, some of them can do. They are all mentioning it as option three. And three, let me check the answer. Yes, absolutely correct. So option three, A and C are correct. Mega and uh, Mega had many granaries suggesting sophisticated collective management. And also granaries are lined up with a day play to protect the seeds from the dampness and insects. So see this image, study the picture and answer the question that follows. Which of the following options describes the given picture that relates to the characteristics of the practice of cattle owning in the villages? Option A, maintenance of pastures around villages were encouraged. References can be found to grassing of livestock, provision of water from clean ponds and livestock storehouses. Option C, cows came to be regarded as sacred, while Buddhism and Jainism promoted non-killing of all animals. Option D, all the above. Uh, every lot of people are saying all the above. The D, D. All the above is absolutely. So, answer is option D, all the above. So option A, maintenance of pastures around villages were encouraged. References can be found to grazing of livestock, provision of water from clean ponds and livestock storehouses. Houses came to be regarded as sacred, while Buddhism and Jainism promoted non-killing of all animals. So all the options are correct. So this is assertion reasoning. You will be getting some confusion in this part only. So before attending this assertion and reason, you just read the question once or twice or thrice. First, understand the question. What is the assertion given and what is the reason given? And then go with the options, right? So there are two statements marked as assertion and reason. Mark your answer as per the course provided below. First one, Surapala's Rikshayubeda is a treatise on Arbori horticulture. Reason, it emphasizes the importance of trees and environment. So option A, both A and R are true, and R is the correct explanation of A. Option B, both A and R are true, and R is not the correct explanation of A. Option C, A is true, R is false. Option D, A is false, R is true. Your time starts now. You can give your answers in the chat box, or anyone can come and unmute and say the answer. Everybody is saying A. Option A. And all are very clear with this lesson. <laughs> Option A is the correct answer. Option A and R are true. And R is the correct explanation of option A. So reason correctly explains the importance of trees and environment that was mentioned in Surapala Vikshayadvita. So now guess this answer. So there are two statements marked as assertion and the reason. Mark your answer as per the course provided below. Assertion, since Vedic times, owning cattle means possessing wealth. Reason, most of the rituals celebrated in our country are being accompanied with honoring the cows and bullocks. Option A, they have given. Option B, you can choose the best answer. The time starts now. Think and answer. Uh, both uh, B, B is coming. Somebody is saying A, uh, but mm -hmm. Gauri Nandan is saying A. Others are all saying B. B, okay. Okay. That Any student can unmute and say why the answer is B? Please unmute your mic and say why the answer is B. 
So you are saying both A and R are true. We don't wear shoe or we don't take bullocks. Especially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? Uh, both A and R are true, and R is the R is not the correct explanation of A. Assertion is true since Vedic times owning uh, cattle means possessing wealth. Here, reason is also true. The correct reason for the given assertion will be, as ma'am said, ma'am, regarding the cattle. Okay, so this is the answer. Next question. So you can see the answer here. A and R are true, and R is not the correct explanation of A. So there are two statements marked as assertion and reason. Mark your answer as per the course provided below. So the importance of good seeds are being clearly recognized by the ancient people. Reason lawgiver Manu had recommended several punishments for the adulteration of seeds. Yes, come on, children, give your answer, ma'am. What is the answer they are giving? Is it A they are writing? Can you write again? I thought it was for the last question. A, quite uh, a number has mentioned A. Question number six, what is the yeah, answer? A, 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 A they are saying. A. Yes, absolutely correct. Both A and R are correct and R is the correct explanation of A. The importance of good seeds are being clearly recognized by the ancient people. And last even Manu also recommended the several punishments for the audience of seeds is related with each other. Right? Okay, next question. There are two statements marked as assertion and reason. Mark your answer as per the course provided below. Assertion, crop production often dependent on seasonal monsoon rains. Scholars worked out methods to predict in rainfall. Reason, Varaha Migira in his Brahat Samhita used the technique based on the position of sun and moon in prediction of rainfall. This is a very important question. Often they will be asking in the board exams. So the options are both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. B, both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. C, A is true, R is false. D, A is false and R is true. Their time starts now. So they are saying A, uh, but uh, C, V, okay. Tatamangalam says C. C. Okay. And uh, say ARS also, somebody has said C. So there's a confusion here. Chinmaya okay. Vidya Lenaga Patnam says A. There are some Cs. So let, me check them. let me check the answer. So answer is C. is C. A is true. R is false. Why? Because in the recent statement, the method used by Varaha Migira was based on lunar mansions. And not on the based of position of sun and moon. That is the reason. Here they have mentioned as the position of sun and moon. Actually, it is based on the lunar mansions, right? So that's why uh, A is true, R is false. Is that clear, children? Uh, the, somebody has raised the hand. Sanskrit, Tabrival. Mm. You want to say something, Sanskriti? Are you, ma'am? Actually, I wanted to answer. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, right. Say your answer. Ma'am, same thing, uh, Lunar Mansion. Okay, okay, good, ma'am. So, next question. There are two statements marked as assertion and reason. Mark your answer as per the quotes provided below. So, assertion, livestock diseases are those affecting the horns, teeth, buccal cavity, etc. Reason, the fancy text, Loka Pakara, indicates, Loko Pakara indicates treatments for various livestock diseases. Option A, both A and R are true, and R is the correct explanation of A. Both A and R are true and R is not the correct explanation of A. C, A is true, R is false. And D, A is false and R is true. Pick your answer. Uh, Harsh says C. Some A's C. have come and one B has yeah. come. Yeah, okay. you can see there is confusion. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me check the answer. So C is the answer. Assertion is true, but reason is false. Yes, Why? Because Vidyalaya Mitti Madai and C V Tatamangalam gave the right answer. All others are saying. Yes, very, very Get it clear? Why is it not A or B? Some Lenovo yeah, yeah, actually in says B. Yeah. Yeah. In reason, they have mentioned that the Sanskrit text Loko Pakara indicates treatments for various livestock. Actually, Loko Pakara is a Canada text. Okay. That is the answer. That's why the reason is wrong here. Okay. So A is true or is false. Is that clear, children? 
So if they mentioned as Canada test loco pakara, then it is the correct state, correct reason for assertion, right? Next, uh, fill in the blanks. You can give your answers. That is details of the blog design with the Sanskrit names for different parts. Option A, Amara Kosha, Surapala, Rishi Parasara, Manusmuti. Give your answers. C, C. Everybody is saying C. Okay. Very good. Kudus to the children. Rishi Parasara is the correct answer. So, question number 10. Protection of animals is considered as the dharma of superintendent of cattle, sage, king, villages. What is the answer, children? They have taken the questions from the text. You need to read each and every line from the text. B, some, there is some B and some D. Some uh, C also me there. Is there is some C, C also. Yes. Shall we check the answer? Yes, the C answer is... is C is the correct answer, king. Protection yeah. of canals is considered as the dharma of kings. So dash was recommended for the growth of rice in Krishi Gita. Green revolution, green manuring, organic farming, red manuring. So time starts. Oh. Again, some B is there. So then many questions we have taken from then primary school. So don't leave primary text. It is playing a vital role in the part of examination, right? So what is the answer, ma'am? B, B. Everybody is giving B. Option B. Okay. So B is the correct answer. Green manuring. Absolutely correct. Very good. Children. Next question. Bash names two fishes. Rohu and Patan. As suitable for food. Option A, Vrikshayurveda, B, Ejurveda, C, Manusmriti, D, Dikrik Veda. The time starts now. C, C coming up. Manusmriti, Manusmriti, yes, Mitchell. Yes, absolutely correct. C, Manusmriti is the correct answer. Give a big applause to our physics. Next question is 13th question. Transplanting the seedlings was perfected in the deltas of dash and dash. There's some confusion will be there. Option A, Yamuna and Godavari, Krishna and Godavari, Godavari and Yamuna, Ganga and Yamuna. B, the lot of bees coming up. Lot of bees. Absolutely correct. Uh, Krishna and Godavari is the correct answer. Very good, children. So see the different uh, type of one mark here. Match the items in column A with that of uh, column B. Here column A, they have given blade harrow, uh, palakapya, fermented liquid manure, tame trees, cow. In column B, punapajala, bakkar, livestock, mother of rudras, elephant. And options also they have given. You can take your own time and you find out the correct answer. Somebody is saying C. Immediate answer. Check out the correct answers. Think and answer. Nagapatnam says A. A. Okay. You can show the answer. Yes. So option B is the correct answer. So, what is the option? First one, blade arrow, bakka. And next, palakapia is the answer for fifth one, that is elephant. Third one, fermented liquid manu, guna kajala. Fourth, tame trees. Fourth one, what is the answer? Third, lifestyle. Cow, option B, right? Fourth one, third answer, lifestyle. And the cow, fourth one, that is mother of rudras. So this is the answer. So option B is the correct answer. So here are some two marks. So you can see the two mark like here. So the application of gunapajala and crops is still practiced by farmers. State the reason. So you can give all possible answers, whatever you can give from the textbook as well as in general answers. 
Here are some of the possible answers they have given here. Uh, cross grown with natural manure will give good yield. The liquid manure that is Guna Pajala is prepared by boiling mixture animal excreta, bone marrow, flesh and dead fish in an iron pot and then adding it to sesame oil cake, honey, soaked black gram and a little wheat. No fixed quantities of materials were required and so farmers find it easy to follow. Other than this, you can give a number of answers for these questions. None, any answers is there now? Um, there is some B. This is not choose the best answer. They are giving oh, okay, okay. It's the previous question. Yeah, but yeah. I think you have to skip the answers for this. Uh, There's a short answers, right? Mm -hmm. So quickly go through it. Okay. Well, then um, you can take short of time. Yeah. You can take 20 seconds and you can give your answers in the chat box or you can unmute your mic and you can speak. One point if Any you can give one all relevant point. Any one relevant point is finished. Anybody would like to unmute and say the application of Gunap Pajala on crops is still practiced by from farmers. What is the reason? Any one point anybody want to give? Sanskriti. She's raised her hand. Yeah. Sanskriti, yeah. unmute and yeah. say. Yeah. Hariyom, everyone. Uh, Hariyom, ma'am. Uh, I'm Sanskriti Hariyom. from uh, CIRS. I would like to answer this question. Uh, the application of uh, Kuna Pajala on crops is still practiced by farmers because as we know, Kuna Pajala is, a, uh, organic, is an organic manure which is like uh, made in an iron pot uh, mixed with dead fishes, uh, oil cakes, uh, ghee uh, and honey and uh, um, they, are, they are mixed together and then this uh, Kuna Pajala uh, is made and then this is very pure and very organic. It, uh, it uh, increases the fertility of the soil, which, uh, which results in good yield. Yeah, yeah absolutely correct. Ma, we will be giving two marks for you. They clap for you. <laughs> That's okay. good. Uh, Jayaprada, you want to go a little faster? We have just five minutes more for you. So, yeah, ma, yeah. Ma. Faster, so little these faster. are the possible answers. Yeah. And this is the second question. What do you understand by pesticulture and how did you reach Bengal? So the answer is like this only the breeding or rearing and transportation of fish by artificial means is called as pesticulture. And it is believed that pesticulture came from China, where it originated almost 2,500 years ago to Bengal via Thailand. This is the exact answer, whatever it is there in your textbook. So text-based questions, you will be having general questions as well as text-based questions. Here are some of the examples I have given. The prosperous agriculture being the base of the strong kingdoms or empires, it was almost always supported by the multitudes of Indian rulers. The tradition was to impose minimal tax on farmers, rarely exceeding one-sixth of the produce. We probably need to continuously remind ourselves of the wisdom of our ancestors and provide genuine respect and importance to farmers. How does the attitude of kings towards the agriculture and farmers differ from the today leaders? Mention the re reasons behind it. Students, you will be having uh, a number of answers for this question according to your point of view. So you can brief all those things in chat box, okay? So second text-based model is 10 wells are equal. I have taken from the textbook only. 10 wells are equal to one pond. 10 ponds are equal to one lake. 10 lakes are equal to one sun. 10 suns are equal to one tree. How does these lines stimulate us to recognize the importance of trees? How can we make this modern world to realize the importance of the mentioned line? This is also a question you can give your own point of view. So third model is, Rig Veda, an earliest Indian text, insisted that natural forces such as earth, air, fire, akasha, water, must remain in harmony with each other and human, humanity must not disturb the balance between them. Rig Veda also deals with agriculture, cow protection, cattle management, tree cutting, desire for rain. Harmony between nature and people paved way for peaceful life of ancient people. How far do you agree with the statement and how does absence of such balance affect the lives of modern people? This, uh, Like this, many questions will be asked uh, in text-based question and direct questions also will be there for five months from your textbook. So that's all about agriculture, ma'am. So, thank, thank you so much, ma'am.
yeah we'll um, take some questions after other two also complete thank you so much yeah. oh, thank you thank you in thank spite you. of the trouble of net connectivity it came up and did it did children did you all find it useful to you see a lot of questions we can prepare chinmaya machine can prepare our own question banks collecting questions like this from various lessons so it's going to be really really good for uh, the students so now we have veena ma'am uh, welcome veena ma'am to do the, uh, the the session on the Uh, martial arts please uh, put up your questions you can ask all of them after the uh, sessions are over over to you veena ma'am uh, hari om everyone uh, this is veena nair from ari gurukul school thank you amma uh, for giving this opportunity uh, to rep uh, represent the school as well as uh, guiding the students to how to prepare for the exams i was uh, past two years i've been fortunate enough to have the board evaluations too so uh maybe i'll be uh, able to uh, help students uh in uh, uh, helping them to how to uh, interpret the question and how we can answer those so i'm just sharing the screen right now visible screen visible yeah it will be good to make it a slide show right clear yeah so i'll be taking a session on martial arts and uh, uh, there is a small change in the paper pattern this time every time we had a passage based question then we had a brief answer uh, then we had a three mark question and then we had uh, mcqs but there is a small change now uh, in the paper uh, where we no more have any passage based questions but it is split into five mark questions there are small extracts a kind of questions for five marks uh, then we have two mark questions and uh, this time it's quite scoring uh, for the children those who have been referring the past years question paper uh, uh, they are still a bit i, I believe that uh, there will uh, there will be a, a, few, a few confusions as in how to uh, do the studies and there is no more passage based questions and all of those but this is also scoring because there are more competency based and more of knowledge based questions are there so it's better uh, this kind of questions are easy to attempt so we'll start with one mark questions uh, i'll start with the first one is this uh, is the question visible yes yes please go ahead yeah just a minute i'm not able to okay maludha or wrestling was accorded the status of a respectable sport past time and method of warfare with a set of rules prescribed by the malas a warrior clan mentioned in the mahabharata and the buddhist text comment on the effectiveness of wrestling as mentioned in the mahabharata and buddhist text would this system work today in our schools option this would work partially would work exactly as described will not work at all can work only through government intervention so uh, i request students to put up their answers you are able to see the chat box uh, yeah yeah they are yes, all right yes yes i am able to yeah okay a a a a a a okay that is partially we can but again uh, as we are in a democratic country it is very very important that there has to be a government intervention too because there are certain rules and uh, regulations to be followed so if it is a method of warfare there is a requirement of government intervention so it's a bit tricky answer uh, i'll move on to the next i'll move on to the answer it can work through government interventions may it is a sport and a pastime but if we are talking about the uh, a kind of a warfare method then it has to be a government intervention that is the reason it's a bit tricky uh assertion and reasoning kalari page is not merely physical combat for self defense it is complete personal development program assertion so the reason is the kalari training is a discipline for both body and mind the goal being to gain control over one's aggressive tendencies 
and remove one's defects. Kutam Tiragar. So, what can be the answer? Both A and R are true. R is a correct explanation of A. Both A and R are true. But R is not the correct explanation of A. A is true. R is false. A is false. R is true. Okay. Okay. So, I am getting all the answers as A. Yes, it's a correct answer. A, both A and R are true and R is a correct explanation of A. Okay. The third question. Dash enjoyed royal patronage and was one of the 64 arts that could be learned by all. It was so popular that a uh, treatise was composed giving detailed information of it. What is it? Is it Lati Khela, Gatka, Malayudha, or Kalari Pait? Wow. I believe that the children are really prepared for the board exams now because they are able to give almost all the answers. Great. Yes, it's a right answer. It's Malayudha. Okay. So, various disciplines such as Shastra Vidya, knowledge of arms, Dhanur Vidya, archery, Kadaga Vidya, uh, Anuswara, Anuswara Hona, horse riding and fighting on horseback and uh, Gajaharona, fighting on elephant back, were widely practiced. The Gada or mace was also used during these bouts. Now, when we are listening to this, this is, um, uh, if you see some epic movies, uh, you must have all observed the movie of Bahubali. You must have seen these words are actually used in this kind of epic movies. And it is demonstrated also what does it indicate. Okay, so the question goes on what does image what does this image depict the battle between bhima and duryodhana the battle between bhima and jarasandha the battle between jarasandha and duryodhana the battle between balarama and duryodhana oh great the answer is correct the uh, it's the battle between bhima and duryodhana Uh, match the items in column A with that of column B. So, column A is all the martial arts and uh, B is all about the states. So, Kalaripet, uh, Gatka, Valeri Riku, Lati Kela. Column B, Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Punjab, Kerala. Oh, great. It's correct. I, I, I believe this was, uh, it's uh, C. It's quite easy one, I believe. Uh, it is Kalaripet from Kerala, Gatka from Punjab, Valeri Viku from Tamil Nadu and Lati Kela from Bengal. Valeri Viku use, uses a kind of boomerang made of wood ivory or iron it is uh, it is training in remote resistance of or attack on an enemy it was very popular in the medieval period in the southern districts of tamil nadu comment on the effectiveness of using valari viku is this art in any other form still practiced so this is practiced partially this is practiced in some parts of the country this is not practiced this is practiced in many parts of the country
now i i i know that i was uh, expecting this a uh, pride variety of answers i was expecting because this this is a bit uh, tricky one yes it's a correct answer this is practiced in some parts of the country okay let's move to the next question this is a wrestling proper and occurs uh, in all the list it is considered to be the highest type of uh, exercise it leads to glory and wealth wrestling indeed is difficult and in traditional indian gymnasium far more weight is placed on the proficiency in this art which requires courage strength skill and stamina name the exercise mentioned in the above passage stambhashrama rangashrama gonika gonidaka pramada oh wow it's very very important that we read the extra text which is there in every chapter because you have ex questions based on those two yes it's a correct answer it is rangashrama uh again coming back to assertion reasoning questions assertion amar uh, amara dikshanama exercise seems to indicate the effects of massage on the massagist massage is noted as mardana and a derivative from it may be amar dakshashrama both a and r are true and r is a correct explanation of a both a and r are true but r is not the correct explanation of a a is true r is false a is false r is true okay i have one d also a b d everything is there <laughs> okay it is a itself both a and r are true and r is a correct explanation of a all right again one more uh, assertion reason living traditions of wrestling and comeback survive in kushti also called pehlwani reason it has inputs from malayudha as well as persian wrestling okay okay now again i am getting an assertion reasoning are, are always a bit tricky okay 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 all right again it is both a and r are true r is a correct explanation of a that's a a answer i varnasi was known since ancient times as a center of wrestling and uh, malayudha a traditional form of boxing mushti yudha sorry a traditional form of boxing identify the kushti in the given picture bhimseni kushti hanumanti kushti jarasandhi kushti jambuvanti kushti a and c has come it's very very important that we read the images very clearly uh, whatever is mentioned has to be known oh wow i am getting a pretty good answers mm -hmm. okay 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 oh my god this time i have disappointed everyone okay okay there are few who are giving the answers correct okay it is bhim seni kushti the first one answer a now we'll move on to the two mark questions define the following shramas shalila shrama 
एंड भरा श्रम Anybody want to unmute and speak? You can speak. Yes, please. Hari Om, ma'am. Yeah. Hari Om. Yeah. Ah, Hari Om, everyone. I'm Harsh Mittal from CIRS. So, is uh, is swimming in ponds, wells, and lakes. Great. Uh, and B is uh, weightlifting with hands and legs both. Oh wow! Brilliant answer. Yes, it is. At times, it's a bit confusing you, because Shalila Sharma, the moment. uh we think about it uh, it gives about a physical structure we, it uh, reminds us about the physical structure but it is not so it's a correct answer chalila ashrama swimming in a tank lake or river Bra uh, brahma ashrama is weight lifting both by hands and feet there is a possibility of asking questions which are related to the chapter but not given in the text it is possible so we need to prepare ourselves in all 360 degree when we are reading a chapter and specifically martial arts because we being a country where we are into uh, n number of uh, um, uh, activities or rather we can say the sports so we should be aware of this list out to each names of famous indian boxers and wrestlers with their respective state yeah anyone who could raise hand and give the answer hmm. article they say mericom manipur okay so i am getting answer here okay mericom manipur all right great one more so who is she boxer wrestler that you need to identify first okay sushil so kumar haryana yes boxer who uh, mani yes mericom is a boxer correct from manipur sushil kumar haryana is he boxer okay let me give answer this can be few answers it is an open ended one it, you can give any answer i've just uh, noted down on the popular one a uh, boxer maricom from manipur and vijendra singh from haryana and we have wrestlers uh, sushil kumar new delhi and geeta pogat how can we forget the movie dangal which is based on her itself as a wrestler so geeta pogat so there are many more we can add up uh, so as per describe the wrestling arena as given in the text manasulas yeah yeah it can be the recent ones that is what i am asking for it can be an open ended one uh, harsh has raised hand uh, yeah, yeah. see you have to be updated harsh you know maybe when you write the exam somebody else might be there also so you got to be arena was known as the manas of the yeah please give the answer for this detailed description of wrestling pitch the voice is not clear and see उ Uh, uh the arena for wrestling is made they actually put a lot of key and make it smooth that is how uh, the te this text also speaks about it the manasulasa gives a detailed description of the wrestling pitch and says that it should be filled with smooth village soil free from pebbles and other hard objects and should be leveled and kept slightly wet the ground for combat was known as khalaka it was to be high round even and strong and surrounded by vishnu mandapa that that is visitors gallery uh, it should have that was a good answer 
Now moving on to five mark questions. Now this is a question. Martial arts, as the name suggests, are popular art forms that give training in different kinds and dimensions of fighting. Fighting with spear or a sword, physical combat, resisting cavalry attacks, single combat or combat with many, etc. As such, the martial arts, apart from being sources of popular entertainment, also provide training in skills required by professionals, including soldiers. Elaborate in detail the different types of stick comeback along with its origin. It's already there in text. You can write it as it is. Or also if any current stick comeback, which is being used as of now as a spot, even that can be used as an answer. If you are able, it is if it is difficult to identify. Yeah, please go ahead. Now, various type of stick combats, Latikela and Sidlambam in South, uh, South uh, India, yes. and Kurundadi, and then Valari Vichu and Garka. And Latikela, okay. it means a stick play, it is very popular. Um, Sidlambam, which is uh, very popular in the South India, and Valari Vichu is a kind of a boomerang made of food uh, that is like uh, ivory of iron. And it is the training in a remote resistance of or um, attack, uh, attacking for enemies. And then Gartha is one of most popular and ancient martial art and in the region of Punjab. Thank you. Great, great. So whenever we are speaking about this is uh, whenever we are talking about any uh, five mark question, it is very very important that we have our inputs also. As in when we are talking about stick combat, when we when you are speaking about any stick combat, it is mandatory that you also describe what is the current status of this particular stick combat. So this is as I have taken from the text, uh, Lati Kela, it speaks about everything where it is performed, what are the different style and how it is done. Uh, then I have described about uh, Silambam, then Kuruntandi also I have spoken about. But then uh, when you are speaking about this, it is very important that what is the current status of this spot? Is it still practiced? Or why it cannot be practiced? That needs to be a bit uh, on a you know when you are explaining it has to be explained that also. So it is very very important that we do not only gain a textual knowledge but also have a as I said a three sixty degree angle to what we are uh, trying to attempt as an answer. The word limit is already given. It would be in the, uh, it is given actually in the beginning of the question paper itself. But normally it is uh, 80 to 100 words. That is how the uh, limit is given for this. Five more questions. Okay. We can have open-ended questions too. Many traditional games and sports are still practiced today. List any one such game using the following hints. The training ground, kit or material used, famous Indians associated with it, rules followed, center associated. So anyone who can uh, give me an answer to this question. So we have many sports. Uh, Amrita Vidyalayam, Nagapatnam, they have a doubt. You keep, it, you keep it with you, we'll ask after the session, all the three have finished. Football. Khazar board says football. Okay. But then when we are talking about football, everything needs to be known. Okay. So what is uh, what is the kit or materials which are used? Cricket is also there. Yes. Wrestling. How can we forget? Yes. Any Anything else? Kaliri Pait, even though it is, uh, you know, uh, it is also termed to be one of the games itself, Kaliri Pait. It is an art form, martial art form, which is done. And there are many other martial art forms when we talk about. So it is open-ended. You can, uh, that is fantastic. Kabaddi is also one of it. Kabaddi almost, it's, it is similar to what we have, uh, boxing or a wrestling kind of a thing. It a mixture of it. So it can be, but it, you have to mention how the tra tra training ground should be, how it is made, what is the texture which is followed, 
uh, what are the basic uh, materials which are used who are people associated to this particular thing there are certain rules to be followed rules are there for every sport or game and the centers associated center is the place through which you can appear like as in let's say olympics let's say if it is uh, cricket it is bcci so there are many you know uh, so these are the centers associated well through which you can play so these are what we are talking about so with this i come to an end of my session uh, thank you so much and you all were so so interactive so i really enjoyed this session hope uh, everyone was i was able to help you all with this particular chapter thank you thank you veena that was an amazing session too i'm sure it's been very useful for the children uh, if you close the powerpoint um, now let's welcome the third speaker we have uh, swarna dasarathi ma'am from chinmay international school she'll be talking on the ethics uh, chapter over to you swarna ma'am note down your questions this is chinmay vidyalaya which school they have uh, raised their hand please note it down after swarna ma'am finishes we'll have question answer sessions for 15 20 minutes hurry up ma'am hope my uh, slide share yeah. is visible to you shall i start yes 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 perfect Um, first of all let me thank uh, shanti ma'am every time she gives uh, a work which makes us to brainstorm a lot thank you ma'am for this wonderful uh, opportunity you have given children without any delay because already uh, first two speakers have given a good uh, stage then uh, let us go into the question answers uh, this ethics individuals and then uh, social <coughs> wait a minute is my slide share visible ma'am you are on the first slide yes yes sir uh, it's now gone uh, one more moment should i uh, help you let me let uh, me know yes ma'am yes yes sir. now it's it's fine go to the next slide we'll check whether it's working yeah yes i could work it out yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. children if you see this is the scheme of the assessment provided by the cbsc board cbsc clearly mentions that this particular chapter is carrying 17 marks so you need to be very very clear on this topic okay going to the next slide children uh, directly i'll go into mcqs so i have divided this presentation into like mcqs two marks questions five marks questions if time permits i have designed an activity a small activity wherein you can frame your own questions okay let us see the first question what is the fundamental concern of ethics i am not going to read every answer you please type your answers immediately i'll go for the answer also is it political issues economic <laughs> issues moral values someone can open the mic and speak or someone can chat say the answer of, everybody has written c varna yeah, ma'am perfectly ma'am absolutely yeah. moral values is the I right can't. answer someone is speaking can you please mute <clears throat> yeah in the indian Thank context the what is the concept of dharma dharma primarily associated with dharma uh Uh, someone is speaking children please mute yourselves and then like uh, discuss the answers your voices are audible over here nagapatnam amrita vidyalaya nagapatnam yes keep your mic muted ah yeah we understand your excitement you are preparing the question but please mute your social order or personal happiness what is the answer for this social order is the answer for this sir. yes let me go to the next question children which of the following is not one of the four ends of the life see we have chaturvidha purushartha see there are four options and then one option is there uh, which is not the part of chaturvidha purushartha what is the answer can you unmute and say or you can chat ma'am are they sending the answer i am not able yeah, to yeah yeah everybody is giving d d as the answer perfect the health swasthata is not the right answer dharmartha kama moksha are the chaturvidha purusharthas perfect then next question is how do the triratnas in jainism contribute to an individual spiritual and then ethical development please read the options and then answer unmute and answer that will be interactive and engaging do they symbolize uh, main deities or uh, are there the types of the meditation or uh, stages of the life according to jainism or the fundamental ethical principles what is the answer there is c and d as come some kasar god is saying c 
uh, uh, many others are saying D. D is the right answer, ma'am. Uh, three Ratnas are the three fundamental ethical principles in the Jainism. They are the central values. Yes. Let me go to the next question. Which value is reflected in the quote? Please read the quote carefully. In prosperity, bend low. In adversity, stand straight. Which value is applied over here? Is it humility, courage, generosity or patience? Can someone okay. unmute and answer? Achha, people are telling yay. Uh, yeah, it's partially true. Yay, if only the first statement is given. Bending bending low in the prosperity is humility, but combining with uh, adversity and then standing straight, courage is the right answer. You should have the courage to stand upright for the values, even when your situations are adverse also. B is the right answer, children. Okay, six. See the picture. What is the central theme? provided by the picture and then which value can be associated with that which option is it respect for nature is it personal gain and ambition or is it a competition and rivalry with someone or it is individualism and self-interest what is the answer ma'am is there any answers coming yeah hey, hey, everybody is right yeah me. absolutely perfect perfect answer children sundaralal bahuna chipko will come into our minds it's respect for nature and then compassion towards the nature also. Going to the next question. How can the principle of ahimsa be applied in daily life? Is it by practicing meditation or by maintaining vegetarian diet or by engaging in debates about ahimsa or by learning a musical instrument to play songs about ahimsa? What could be the right application of ahimsa? Understand, I'm giving you a clue. Application of ahimsa. Everybody is saying A. A. Yeah, children, it's a, it's, it's a kind of tricky question you need to understand. By practicing meditation, you cannot apply that. You have to be strictly vegetarian diet so that you're practicing, you're applying the concept of ahimsa, isn't it? Just think and answer. Okay, the next question is, there is a statement. Values are caught, not taught. I repeat, values are caught, not taught. What does this statement imply? What is it talking about? So value should not be taught in education, but we all have value class, classes. And then values are primarily transmitted through observation and example. Value should not be instilled in children at all. Values are difficult to understand. Children, I'll give you a small trick over here. To answer MCQs, you need to eliminate if you know to any eliminate the wrong answers, you'll be tension free. So absolutely, what can be eliminated over here? Value should not be instilled in children. It is absolute wrong answer. You can eliminate that. Values are difficult to understand. It is also absolutely wrong answer. You can eliminate that. So values cannot be learned through education. Somewhat doubtful answer. Then values are primarily transmitted through observation and example. So you're left out with A and B. What is the answer? Everybody writing B, B and uh, Nagapatnam has mentioned A. Okay, A is the wrong answer. B is the right answer because when we say children listen, when we model, children will follow, obviously, right? So values are transmitted through observation and example. That is the right answer. Then coming to assertion. Okay, favorite questions. The concept of dharma in Hinduism encompasses one's duty obligation and righteousness and the reason goes like this hinduism emphasizes performing one's duties according to one's social position and stage of life before you jump into answers children i have a small thing to tell you whenever you go for assertion and reasoning have a pencil with you okay just forget about reason read the assertion is the assertion correct or not utilize entire your knowledge arena yes tick no cross then come to reason forget about the assertion and then come to reason is the reason correct? Not pertaining to assertion generally. Is the reason correct or not? So you have a tick for assertion. You have a tick for reason. Maybe a tick or maybe a cross. Then check the relation. How far reasoning is justifying the assertion. Now go for the options. Now confidently you know assertion is correct or wrong. Reason is correct or wrong. Then correlation is correct or wrong. Now answer me. What is the right answer for this? Ma'am, is there any answers coming up? Uh, somebody has said C. Okay. A also has come. Okay, let me go for the answer because a, the time a, is... A are given. Both are giving A. Yeah, 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 yes. And uh, is harsh is D. Okay. Uh, harsh it is A, beta because assertion is correct. And then reason is also correct. Assertion is perfectly explaining the reasoning also here. Both are true. Okay, coming to next question. 
uh, Jainism places great importance on three gems, right vision, right knowledge and right speech. Pick or cross, assertion is correct or wrong. Then reason, these three gems are essential for leading a virtual and ethical life in Jainism. Is it correct or wrong? Both are related or not? What is your answer? They are saying D. Okay, A is false, R is true. See, children, you are working smart, definitely. Okay, so assertion is false. So why assertion is false? If you observe, because you are prepared with this, uh, your uh, answers. Uh, when Triratnas, when I'm talking about, I changed a little word. It is not right speech. It is right conduct. You observed it correctly and then answered it very well. Very nice. And then Sikhism promotes values such as compassion, selfless service and non-enmity. Tick or cross. Then reason. These values are considered to be optional for Sikh ethics and then way of life. Is it correct or is it wrong? Tick or cross. Then understand the correlation, then answer. And what is the answer they're giving, ma'am? D, D, C is coming and D is also coming. Okay, let us check the answer. Assertion is true. Reason is false. Why reason is false? I have given that it is optional for the righteous way of the life. No, never. It is not at all optional. It is the central value, right? You're observing the statements correctly. Next step. Indian philosophy has a long history of addressing fundamental questions of ethics and then moral conduct. Tick or cross, do it. Then come to reasoning. Philosophical principles dealing with fundamental questions can be best taught through stories. Is it correct or is it false? Yes. Then understand the connection. Is assertion correct? Is reasoning correct? Both are supporting each other or not? What is the right answer? Ma'am, any answers, ma'am? Sanskriti says C and okay. others say A, B, A, everything different answers. Are correct. Okay, I understand. Like uh, everything is correct. Uh, like apparently you felt so. So here, assertion is also correct, children. Reason is also correct. But assertion is not supporting the reason directly, right? They both are different, different uh, true statements. See, uh, it, the stories are nowhere related to the assertion given. That is why assertion and reason are true, but the reason is not explaining the assertion. It is explaining some other context. Okay, moving on. Yeah, now I'm going to the descriptive questions. Two marks as well as five marks. Fine. Coming to two marks question, children, the word limit will be 40 max to max 50. Keep it yourselves like that so that what will happen, your time will be saved. Justify the assertion that non-violence or ahimsa is a fundamental ethical principle in both Jainism and Buddhism through specific examples. So anytime you attempt the question, children, make a skeleton for that. So identify the words, the technical words over here. Ethical principle, fundamental principle, Jainism, Buddhism. So here you need to talk about Jainism as well as Buddhism on basis of what you need to talk on basis of the non-violence. So is non-violence a fundamental ethical principle in Jainism and Buddhism? You answer that much only. No need to explain what is Buddhism, what is Jainism, what is the fundamental ethical principle? No. Is non-violence a central principle or not? Is there anyone ready to answer in the required manner or shall I show the answer? Please unmute, anyone of you. How Jainism and Buddhism are centralized with the ethical principles of non-violence, non arahimsa. Shall I show the answer? Yes. Here I go with the answer. Here I am not mentioning the three ratnas or four noble truths or anything. I directly jumped. Non-violence or arahimsa is a fundamental value of the Jainism. In Jainism, ahimsa is the central value because... Uh, to take a vow, a Jain monk or a Jain follower must take the vow of Ahimsa also. So, obviously, I am supporting my statement that non-violence is emphasized. Compassion is emphasized. And then Jainism says that so many things, Punya Karma, Papa Karma, all those things, like it should be in the mind, but no need to mention all, make a statement that uh, it is emphasizing. Coming to Buddhism, no need to mention the Noble Eightfold Path or anything. And then you can say that non-violence is the primary value because Buddhism supports the right action and then the right speech. Non-violence is the central value. And then ethical virtues are definitely compassion as well as the friendliness in Buddhism. There ends the answer. Examiner expects this much only from you. No need to explain any other thing. Okay, coming to next question. Why it is important 
एक्सक्यूज मी टू लीड अवर लाइफ इन हार्मनी विथ नेचर मेंटेनिंग द नेचुरल बैलेंस फ्रॉम एन एथिकल परस्पेक्टिव include real world examples also understand that subject specific words over here leading our life how in harmony with whom nature and then we have to extend the natural balance also so keeping all this aside what is the question is asking in an ethical perspective how to live along with the nature maintaining the balance and then prove it showing that sanatana dharma promotes the same so divide the question into two parts show that we have to lead an ethical life living with nature and then provide an example that sanatana dharma says it is there anyone ready with the answer beta can someone say okay i'm going for the answer please see living in harmony with nature definitely acknowledges our connection to the environment uh, and is therefore morally very important also see children uh, you need to give an introductory line for five marks question and a concluding line also as this is not the uh, five marks question i'm directly jumping into answer what mentioned about uh, this ethical order or cosmic order rigveda so we are bringing rigveda here from the textbook rigveda mentioned about all pervading cosmic order which stands for harmony and balance in nature and the human society it is given in 151 uh, page number in your textbook and then not only that it has mentioned which has mentioned rigveda has mentioned rita rita means the power of the powers that power of the powers uh, which maintains the cosmic order so we need to maintain that balance and in rigveda it is also mentioned that if we disturb the order the whole cosmic order will disturb us also and not only that it causes suffering it is all clearly mentioned it in your textbook so we must maintain cosmic order we are directly addressing the question shooting the answer so the example is in sanatana dharma we worship rivers and trees that is the best example i believe because when we give a, uh, give the higher order to anything the worship rivers and then trees we will not pollute them we will not cut them so that what will happen automatically the balance of the nature will occur we are uh, practicing the natural balance through the ethical mentions okay coming to next question explain with examples here onwards i'm starting five marks questions children explain with examples how the four cardinal virtues in sikhism including compassion dana humility namrata then restraint sat and then service seva are fundamental to lead a righteous life again divide the question into components the first component is the cardinal virtues dana namrata sat and seva this is the first component and the second component of the uh, the question is how these all are helping a sick person or any other person who is following as the fundamental uh, value systems for the righteous life now you understood the question there are some cardinal virtues in sikhism and then see you no know, need for you to check for the examples over here because the question is directly supporting the statement fundamental ways of leading a righteous life through these virtues beta are you ready with the answer arundhati shall i go yeah here is the answer for you sikhism places importance i have mentioned the introductory line uh, with the support of all the cardinal virtues and then i went to an example what is the example best thing we can say is the langars see as uh, veena ma'am told some things we need to quote out of the textbook also if they are not given in the textbook also we need to mention authenticating the answer right langars and then charitable activities if you see if you go to any gurudwara 24 by 7 they will be serving the food they will be ready to offer the help they will be arranging the blood donation camps also it is all because of what it is it is all because of the cardinal virtue of dana and then seva so we are emphasizing that dana and seva are reflected as langars and then the charitable activities so these two are leading them to righteous life coming to second point the virtue of the humility what is humility namrata namrata means see you are divine i am also divine so i need to accept the divinity in you sikhism is providing that namrata when everyone accepts the divinity in others what is the problem no problem in the society so righteous way of the living will occur when coming to sat sat says that have the self control be contented what will happen if you are contented you will not have any, any excessive cravings so contentment leads to righteous way. no stealing no killing so obviously people will be in the righteous way and then 
the last point one of the main tenets of the sikhism is service of course first point also emphasizes that and the last point is also emphasizing when you see uh, most of the army armed forces will be from the sikhs only they will be ready to do the seva even for the individuals or for the country also so it shows their voluntary work for the sake of the society which value instilled in them selfless service it is the cardinal virtue instilled in them is helping them to go voluntary for the service so as it is five marks question we are giving a conclusion also together these are all the values which is emphasizing which are emphasizing the social harmony and then selfless service obviously when a child is groomed with all these virtues there is no question that the child will not be right yes so we are justifying our answer wonderfully over here okay coming to the last question discuss the role of bhakti movement in shaping social and ethical values in india okay first part of the question is asking to discuss discuss what the role of bhakti movement then how did the bhakti saints challenge existing social norms and promote inclusivity and compassion children if you closely observe this question the first part of the question is something and second part of the question is giving a lead to the question to answer okay so you, you need to discuss what do you need to discuss you need to discuss about the role role of what bhakti movement see you are a child so you have so many roles right as a student you have a role as a child you have a role as a team player you have a role as a captain you have a role as a grand grandchild you have a role so the role of the bhakti movement in only shaping social and ethical values you need to concentrate and that question itself is giving the lead what is the lead over here bhakti saints is the lead and then bhakti saints they challenged the existing social conditions let us see the answer over here in bharat the bhakti movement uh, when did it occur what is the time period what is the reason what are all the causes no need to mention all those the role of bhakti movement in emphasizing the social ideal social values so who encouraged jayadeva tulsidas kabirdas all those bhakti says emphasized the social ideals how did they do that they broke up all the existing stupid social conventions so these saints promoted human equality they rejected the disparities based on the caste color creed and then any other thing to that case gender also and then if you observe in the bhakti movement we will have sant vani and then those are all the poetic works so no strong hymns or rituals were promoted bhakti saints went beyond customary ritualistic practices if you have to pray god you have to do one havan or homa no nothing we can have an intimate relation direct relationship with god through shravanam mananam or uh, by music or by dance anything the emphasis all those things so all these simple methods of reaching the god brought back the people into the social order a social a society that was more compassionate and then inclusive it is inclusive because it included all caste people all colored people all creed people all uh, the people of any gender so it is inclusive in age nature so it promoted uh, the higher value of love and devotion and then not about any disparities of the society the social hierarchies were broke down due to this bhakti movement and then the concluding statement will be the movement's uh, beliefs encouraged moral behavior among its followers encouraging societal harmony and then moral principles based on love and devotion to a greater good see uh, if uh, through the song if we can reach the god irrespective of your caste you can reach the god through the dance you can reach the god that brought the normalcy in the society this deserves a perfect five marks okay i hope i have little time so now it's activity time the activity is frame a question so to make the things easier for you children so uh, step 1 and then step 2 this is a strategy for you whenever you are reading okay first time reading you take a pencil or a highlighter what do you need to do you understand the subject specific terminology let us say from this lesson what i have opted for uh, the subject specific terminology will be jainism or sikhism or buddhism or hinduism individual social religion rigveda pali sanskrit subject specific terminology you identify and underline them and then go for second reading when you go for second reading you need to identify the transitional words that means there will be some words which are bringing connections between the paragraphs or the subtopics or uh, like jumping from one topic to another topic like let us say the words uh, are which are called as significant importantly permitting 
pertaining apart from these the belief or the objection merit demerit uh, emphasize these words in a different color or in a different way why you know see these uh, transitional verbs will give you a lead to think how the questions will come okay now step number one read and then underline the subject specific terminology in one way step number two underline the transitional words in a different way so what will happen because of that we will go for little exercise so this is an extract from the lesson children page number 150 uh, uh, 151 of your own textbook so uh, can anyone volunteer to read this better it is from your own textbook can someone volunteer and read this yeah, by audible Sanskriti, Harsh or Kritan, can anyone of you read? Yes, ma'am. Ma ma'am, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Harsh. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, Hello. please carry on. Harsh, carry on. Uh, in the Hindu way of life, every individual is expected to perform his or her duty appropriate to his or her caste, Varna, and stage of life, Asrama. This division of one's life into the four ashramas and the and their perspective dharmas was designed in principle at least to provide fulfillment to the person in his social, moral, and spiritual aspects, and so to lead harmony and balance in the society. The four ashramas are Brahmacharya, stage of studentship, Krasta, stage of householder, Vanaprastha, life in the forest, and Sanyasa, renunciation. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, perfect, perfect, very good. It's respective, better not perspective. Okay, so now we'll go to the strategy. Step number one: underline the subject-specific terminology. You can unmute and speak, better. Feel free to speak. What are the subject-specific words over here? From the four ashramas. Yes, exactly. Four ashramas: Kruhasta, Brahmacharya, and then uh, Varna. <laughs> Vanaprastha. Yeah, perfect. What are the transitional words over here? Identify. Uh, ma'am, the division of one's life into four ashramas. Yeah, division, one's life. If you Prince. see fulfillment, principle. expected, principle, all <coughs> these are the transitional words. Now let us see. Okay. I'll give you two minutes, children. Please write in the chat box which kind of questions you can prepare through this paragraph. You prepare your own questions. That itself is the activity. Read this extract and then prepare your own questions. As the Shanti ma'am clearly explained uh, us that there will be some remembrance questions. There will be some evaluating questions. There will be some synthesis questions. So try to find uh, frame questions in your own. This activity helps you a lot to think better. Please write in the chat box. The chat box is open for you. You start making one or two because otherwise it's going to take a lot of time. You start uh, giving a clue so that they can do it. Okay, okay, ma'am. So, uh, so very simple question. Uh, how many ashramas are there? Four ashramas are there. So, like that, make simple questions, children. The chat box is open for you. Uh, write in the chat box. Or unmute and speak. You can unmute and speak. Yeah, yeah, that, that's much better, ma'am. You can unmute and speak directly. How can we lead spiritual aspects to harmony? Yes, ma'am. That, that's the level of the question. Chinmaya Vidyalaya Khazar God has mentioned. That's a lovely question. Any, any other question? Otherwise, I think you have to go ahead and finish it. it it's not an activity where everybody can participate. I, I, I definitely yeah. understand, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I'll go for different questions, children. See here, there are some simple questions like what are the four ashramas in Hindu way of life? Can you explain the purpose of dividing one's life into the four ashramas? We understood that there are four ashramas, but what is the purpose? You need to look back and then think. Then how might an individual in the Grihastha stage contribute to harmony and balance in society? It's highly synthesis question. You need to create your own answer. Then do you think the division of life into ashramas is still relevant in today's society? Why or why not? 
you need to apply your concept over here then create a scenario where someone in the vanaprastha stage can contribute both morally and then spiritually to society here the last question doesn't provide you the answer in the paragraph itself when you read and then when you contemplate you will get the answer about this so i'm going for next slide it will be a little easier activity for you children be ready and then i'm expecting answers from you small rules for you use any of the given words and then frame a question using the words discuss examine or explain the words given to you are nishkama karma prosperity or abhyudaya then supreme spiritual good or nishrayas use any one of these any two of these words and then frame questions try to use words like discuss examine or explain or in any way frame questions using these words it can be very simple question like what is nish nishkama karma also try try doing questions define any person who ancient india who performed nishkama karma hmm so it, it becomes very uh, subjective question close ended uh, open ended question also in one way that uh, who uh, or in which particular text text the nishkama karma the word nishkama karma is mentioned it can be something like that Ma'am, uh, any answers are coming, ma'am? Which text means about mentions about nishkama karma? Exactly. Which text mentions? Can someone answer? Very easy question. Mahabharata. Mahabharata, especially Bhagavad Gita mentions about nishkama karma. Very good. Good go. Try doing it. It is also the... known as uh, selfless action, uh, as it is mentioned in Hebraism. Okay, then you can uh, frame a question that what is the synonymous word for nishkama karma, right? Okay, frame a question uh, with uh, Nishrayas or Abhyadayas. Try doing children. I frame two questions already. Shall I show it to them? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Yes. Explain the concept of Nishkama Karma Yoga and its connection with prosperity. So how one's uh, life can be prosperous when they practice Nishkama Karma? You need to answer it that way. The Nishkama Karma is the only way to prosperity and it helps us to reach supreme spiritual God. Justify the statement with the two reasons. You need to provide reasons over here. Okay, the last part of this uh, session. So again, you are allowed to use two words. Rigveda, Rita, power balance frame a question out of this try to frame a question out of this can someone frame no you can give the answers yes ma'am so uh, yeah Two questions are here for you. Discuss the central concept of Rigveda and its relation with the nature and the balance. See, the first very, very second question we have answered in the two marks question. I have changed that question into this. Then, Rita, the power to control all the powers of the nature. It is a statement. Describe the significance of Rita as mentioned in Rigveda. Rita is nothing but the power of the powers the and the central power. The power has mentioned how Rita is explained in Rigveda. That's yes, ma'am. Almost a similar kind of question. That's appreciated, children. Kasargur. So here I'm ending this. So try to apply uh, some uh, the other strategy for you and then follow it very strictly so that uh, you will be uh, happy with the question papers. And then try to have the word limit also like uh, 40 to 50 uh, minimum for the two marks questions. And then you can take a liberty of 150 words or uh, 170 words for the 200 uh, five marks questions, children. And then assertion and reasoning, as I told, look at the assertion separately look at the reasoning separately and then find out the correlation then you will be able to crack the question very very easily so here i'm ending thank you shanti ma'am thank you thank you sanam you can close your powerpoint thank you so much i think the the last few sessions will be helpful for the teachers for you know they, they want to know how you frame questions maybe you can take a clue from them now it is time for uh, the students to ask any questions that you have all three of them are available here. We have uh, uh, Jay Pradha, ma'am. You are there? No. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions you can unmute. You want to ask, you can ask questions. I'm going to share the three PPTs to all of you. Uh, all the students will get it. And also the, uh, the, uh, the, the recording of the today's session also. I will forward it. So any questions you have. It will be interesting, children, if you ask questions. 
uh, you have three of them here they worked so hard i think first of all let's we have to thank them for uh, you know working uh, a program like this i request them and then they've taken a lot of trouble to work on it uh, thank you so much all three of you uh, any questions you have quickly so i think every school should have one question at least kasar go has a question yes are ma'am ma'am rupsha of uh, cvk yeah we have a question in the seventh question ahimsa question from ethics chapter in your yeah. power meditation uh, about the meditation okay okay tell me what is the question but the question is that uh, to for uh, what is that we have to follow vegetarian diet instead of meditation that was the answer uh to to follow no, what is that ahimsa no no that ahimsa to follow ahimsa we should follow this one what do you call vegetarian yeah, yeah, right right vegetarian diet i think ma'am is it meditation won't be correct because uh, there are non veg people those who are also following this ahimsa no? is it correct no no see yeah, yeah, fundamentally ahimsa is not himsa to animals okay <laughs> you look at it translate that word when you are eating non vegetarian you can't call practicing ahimsa right people it's in meditation can they can do meditation people eat non veg can do meditation but when you are eating non vegetarian food it is not ahimsa you are not following ahimsa that's a fundamentally the himsa that is the, that is the only thing that's being looked at in that particular thing am i right uh, swarna ma'am absolutely ma'am correct so that's why more than meditation that takes the uh, call that takes the call one more question uh, and cv tatamangalam you have a question yeah, yeah ma'am can i ask a question yes please uh hari uh, my question is actually that uh, actually a few days ago i saw a uh, watched a video where they were talking that it is, i think it can be applied with ethics so it is my doubt if this can be uh, written in the questions related to ethics i read it that uh, like actually that it is about our caste and religion system that came into india that it actually says that the caste is not by birth it is actually about how what uh, what is the level in our life like now and not everybody is born as a brahmin or shudra it is the life which has which makes us a brahmin or a shudra a brahmin can become a shudra or a shudra can become a brahmin that's what it is said so in ethics it will be applied right absolutely yes absolutely yes ma'am may I, may I answer ma'am yeah please yes absolutely very good question in fact i have been waiting for two questions and one very you came up very briefly answer swarna so that everybody can ask a lot of questions yeah yes 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 uh, the, the answer goes like this beta you have heard a perfect video uh, like video or anything uh, uh, in bhagavad gita uh, sri krishna bhagavan swayam he told that chaturvarnam maya srishta guna karma vibhagaya here again the subject specific words are guna and karma that means ability and the quality of the person will decide his caste definitely not birth as uh, ashudras can become kshatriya if he is able to uh, combat in the battlefield a brahmin son can become kshatriya if he is able to combat or a brahmin son can uh, become uh, a vaishya if he is able to do the agriculture or the trading so it's the horizontal division horizontal social order which was mentioned in our ancient texts but later due to the misinterpretation it became a vertical hierarchy so i think i justified the answer quickly so it is depending upon the ability and the quality the social order was decided to maintain the balance of the society and then like i, yeah, I think that's exactly what she thing. said you are right ma'am uh, uh, the girl who answered you can just say that you are absolutely oh, thank you ma'am yeah anybody else see there are two marks reasoning assertion and also five marks question and uh, sonna ma'am also gave you tips as to how to handle the assertion reasoning see that individually and then work and so many tips were given anything you want to ask them you can ask them so there are many of the questions which we we have to evaluate our own points so that what what was the area we should have to cover when we uh, when we evaluate our own points like uh, is there any uh, specific criteria we should use when they answering our question paper any of you can an ask uh, answer i i didn't get what she exactly is asking yeah exactly what? but be clear with the question uh, like which kind of criteria which kind of questions this frame your question one more time
ma'am i was asking that there are some questions where we we have to evaluate our own points in the uh, in the answer paper so that what are the basic criteria we should follow or we should focus on what we have or what what to write on our points okay so it's, you're asking about the opinion based questions or perspective based questions yes. or real life world examples so real life instances where we have to answer correct. our own points as veena ma'am told initially you need to update yourselves very clearly with the examples connecting to the topic so you be ready with that and then there is no particular criteria but you need to understand the question clearly what question is asking is it asking you to justify then you give an example is it asking you to explain you just explain like whatever is there in the textbook you explain and then like uh, you give example that's all uh, when you uh, i mean understand the question relatively you can answer if you give me a question i can answer you like as you are asking abstract even an answer will also be abstract you give me a question like in when, any particular question you have doubt or something but otherwise if it is asking to discuss you discuss and then leave it if it is asking you to give your opinion you can give your opinion okay ma'am thank you veena veena ma'am you want to add anything yeah, yeah i i'll just add up to what um, ma'am said right now so ma'am said right now um, whenever you are attempting an answer the first thing what you will be doing is you have to connect it to the chapter first and go, go back to the area where you have read this particular thing and find out what what are the important components of that particular question and then have a 360 degree analysis whether whether is it applicable in the current situation or do you have a real life example to situate like uh, on the same pertaining question so that would help uh, this is how you step by step uh, give an answer or think about an answer and make sure that you have done all this three when it is specifically a five mark answer two mark yeah. answer as ma'am said it is very be very crisp whatever the question is asking only attempt that much when it is five mark it is very important that you analyze the question connect it to the text connect it to an example or a real life situation it is it is even uh, you know it is not necessary that it has to be a very famous and very renowned example it can be an example related to you too so even that is acceptable in dance there is a question from kannu uh, could you please give a brief description about the evaluation and presentation of the final project Uh, Jai Bharti, ma'am. Would you like to answer? Already, we have given the topics where we do we need to do the projects and the criteria they have mentioned in the CTC website itself, ma'am. Uh, You are not clear, I... ma'am. Can you be louder? Come closer to the phone and speak. We have. Uh, am I audible, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, in cbse website itself they have uh, given a clear picture about the project and the marks allotted uh, shall i project that on screen ma'am no if it's fine they can take a look at it you can tell them so uh -huh. please uh, she yeah. suggesting uh, the cv kannu team please to take a look at the cbse site which has complete description of the mark distribution and how the project will be evaluated please take a look at that, that. is there yeah there is no resource material as it is any resource material is there for uh, uh, the reasoning assertion questions i don't think is it there no no, no, no we but don't have it uh, no, it is no, like no. Uh, whatever the question bank you got to read really... between the lines to understand that's all read it very carefully to understand i think so i i think that's how it is any other question chinmaya vidyalaya kazar board again you raise your hand you have any question uh, hari om ma'am uh, yeah. can you give more sample papers for uh, assertion reasoning because we find it a little bit difficult to solve and it would be more appreciated yeah, if you could... can work on it you see there are only 6 7 chapters no am i right for uh, uh, examination testing how many chapters five five, five are there five. so three we have done today so ah. two more we'll take it up and do it and compile it and send it to you only okay. assertion reason ma'am even uh, mcqs uh, other mcqs uh, and uh, other stuff uh, like we question. really need one question bank so that we can practice more yeah, yeah. that will do it see we have okay. done for three chapters or uh, two more chapters i'll request uh, help take the help from the the team here uh, veena swarna and uh, 
Jai Bharti ma'am. So kindly work out some uh, possible questions for class uh, one mark and assertion reasoning and that especially the match the following. Uh, you know, those are uh, four of them are there in one lot. So they need to know four one word answers for that. Plus possible two marks and possible five marks. Two marks and five marks, we don't have to give the answers. But uh, one mark, multiple choice. Can can we do that? Is it possible? Uh, yes, ma'am, it's possible. Is it possible? Yeah, we can do it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Please do that help so that we can create a, you know, uh, possible questions, uh, question bank for this. So others are all project. Only these five chapters we need to work. Other teachers, other schools can also add. If you send it to us, uh, to Education Cell, CV article is here, Nagapatnam is here, and Kannur is there, and uh, Khazargod is there. All, all the teachers together can send some one mark questions and all of that together. Then I can, uh, from Education Cell, we can compile and prepare a question bank and send it to all the schools, which will be really good for the schools to prepare. We can work it out. Okay. And uh, Chinmaya Vidyalaya Nagapatnam has a question, uh, Veena. They are yeah. asking you about the weapons like Valari exists in Indian tradition, but why doesn't it allow the use of it in present situation? Uh, there are many reasons to it. First is, uh, why, uh, there is, it's very difficult to trace out the rules and regulations to use it. That is first. Second, um, Valari Viku is basically, and uh, you know, uh, if you see the text also, you read the, the text also, this was used as an attack only during the samurais. Uh, you must have seen how the samurais have used uh, different shapes of Valari Bhikkhu. Uh, here it spe specifies it. As it is dangerous enough to use it, that is the reason why it has been stopped once the era finished. And this cannot be taken as a sport because it is difficult to manage it. So that is the reason why it is not. I don't know how many of you remember the there was a problem with the the Jallikat in Tamil Nadu, mm. it, it harms. The people get really, really hurt. It's a sport that was there. And there was a big Allah that the government stopped it. And then uh, people wouldn't allow it to be stopped. I, I've just heard about that. Uh, that I thought is also something. Uh, people get hurt very badly. So want to be careful about that. Kritan, what is your question? You can speak, unmute and speak, Kritan. Ma'am, I think there's some issue with his mic. Oh, okay. Then you put it in the chat box. Khazargod has written another question. We have a question on women sevens for two marks. Only a few lines on them are mentioned in the textbook. What else we could add, add that to elaborate? Yes, Which lesson does it come? It's from it's from education lesson. Oh, education lesson. So anybody want to education answer now? Lesson. Any other school, any other student can answer also. On uh, women, servants, huh? what is sevens? What is sevens? I, I don't know. Seven. Okay, sevens. What, what is the answer for it? They are wanting to know the answer. Women call us. Actually, the humans call us as called as women's servants. Hmm. What else could be added to elaborate? That's what they are asking. They need to refer some other sources regarding the topic, man. Other sources, external sources. Uh, what, because what in textbook they have mentioned only two lines. That's what she's the person is saying. Um, on women sevens for two marks, but only few lines on them are mentioned in the textbook. So probably you need to do some uh, research on it and find out probably. Yeah, I'm okay. Mm. Uh, like, can you mention what are the two lines? Uh, probably Gargi and Maitreyi. Are these the two uh, uh, mentioned? You can talk about Ubhaya Bharati. Ubhaya Bharati, she was the judge between Mundana Mishra and then Shankaracharya. She was a scholarly lady. Though she was the wife of Mundana Mishra, Shankaracharya accepted her as the judge. That shows the uh, scholarliness of that lady. And then uh, you can talk about uh, Vasishta Sage's wife, Arundhati. She's also a scholarly lady. So uh, like uh, you can talk about the uh, position we have given to women. And then uh, when it comes to Andhra Pradesh, uh, there was a poet called as Molla. And then her social status was so low. And then later Sri Krishna Devaraya had given a higher status understanding her ability. So she can also be an example for that. Some research they have to do, no, ma'am? Swarna, ma'am? 
Yes, ma'am. They have to go for additional resources. There's a recent book, no, by Chitna Mission on women seekers. Maybe that will help. Be helpful. I don't know. You can take a look. Recently, Chitna Mission has brought out this book. Which book? Women seekers of uh, of India. All ah, right. That's a new book which has been released by Chinmay yeah. Mission, yeah. and uh, we have asked all schools to take one copy. Also, I have sent it to them, so that might give. But Kritan is still wanting to talk. If there is no other question, then I think we can wind up. Uh, if you have any questions, ma'am, my question was uh, regarding the. Uh, it is regarding the aspect of answering a question in a board exam. So, if we get a question relating to the question, Veena and I, ma'am, should uh, like. Uh, this would partially work work with government intervention and they give a case study so won't the answer be subjective because everything can be an answer pa partially it is right because malla yuta can work without government intervention like it is also a sport so if you have a proper coach with you and if you have a ground level properly you can act, you can continue and also ma'am i think different people would have different uh, perspectives towards towards those questions According to uh, uh, no Sanskriti, see the question was whether why is it not applied as a warfare? You have to catch that point. That's why I really like the way Swarnama mentioned. You read it, which is the factors, the transition words, and this word she said. That is why she said talked about it. Is it a warfare uh, strategy? Is it a warfare strategy? For warfare strategy, what is needed? Only government intervention. Only government approval is needed. Nothing um, else. Actually, uh, our question is not just limited to that particular question. Like uh, recently, we wrote one KDPI uh, exam in which similar kind of questions were asked. Like, uh, like it was based on uh, education in school. So they are like, uh, if Nalanda University would have been like implemented in today's world, would it work? So that was the question uh, we were given with. So, ma'am, that will have different perspectives, right? Because yeah, yeah. Uh, so Perfect. questions like that. No, like our question is not limited to what Meena Minna and Ma'am asked. It's like, it's like it's okay. not for every other question, whatever we might get in exams. Uh, but yeah, that's perfect. I think some uh, Veena, they can yeah. your own perspective uh, per, per way of looking at it. You can MCQs do. doesn't have a different perspective. You, that uh, as one Ma'am said, you need to catch the uh, you need to decode the questions very precisely because it doesn't have multiple answers. Yeah. MCQs will not be. Are, are you talking about one word, Sanskriti? Oh, yes, ma'am. No, one word, there are no different perspectives. Ma'am, but that is only one perspective. Correct. That is exactly my question, ma'am. Questions like those is very subjective. No, these are not subjective. That, that is the reason why. Because understand. Yuta, yeah. Ma'am, if you take the example of Malla Yuta, your same question, the answer can also be this would not work in today's world because we cannot look at it as a war warfare method also. Correct. It cannot be. That's the reason why it, the options doesn't, uh, that is when it suits the answer. Yes, so that is why it is very, very tricky. It cannot be subjective. No, no, when you say it will not work today's world, you are just not leaving the reason. When the reason is there hitting, that should be chosen. The other one, maybe. Uh, that is one more. Work. When we are, the, when you are getting an uh, instruction, it clearly <laughs> mentions that the near possible answer. It mentions very clearly, very near possible answer. Okay, so it's very clear about it. So it's very, very important. MCQs cannot be a subjective answer or it cannot be, you cannot have a multiple answer to an MCQ. Thank you. Yeah, no, the, the, the very clear it is uh, harsh uh, or keep them. That is one word answers have an answer. It's like maths, <laughs> right or wrong. Yes. So you can read again and again, two may be similar. In that particular question, what she said, it is not possible today and government will not, government permission is needed. Both are there, which is the point which is addressing the warfare aspect. You are saying it's not possible today for many reasons. You may think it's not possible because equipment is not available or any other reason you may say. But if government sanction is there, then only it happened. They will look at the possibilities, how it can be possible. Right? It is not possible is not the perfect answer for it. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Ma like you, are, it's a, it's a kind of a vague answer, no? Suppose I ask you, why do why don't you eat this? You say, ah, oh, I I don't like it. No, that's not the answer. There's one answer to it. Probably I you have to have something which is hitting that exact point. 
one word questions have in even maths also it happens sometimes you know in mathematics also one word questions you'll see there are two parts to it you will say that it is not a natural number but they would have other option will be there it's not a whole number so you got to pick up which is closely uh, uh, striking absolutely i think that is a very i'm very happy that you all have this questions so we will work on this uh, before this and very we will send you this question bank i mean i i will see how we can send it but i think i need support from all the other schools also article kannur can you all help nagapatnam teachers those who are taking let it be a joint effort of all the schools together who are meeting here uh, for the over the last one year we've been talking about kdpi so please see that we all join hands and we can work on it and uh, it's amazing the way all three of you worked on it special gratitude from education cell to jay bharti ma'am uh, veena and swarna ma'am it's amazing to uh, you know to get your uh, uh, contribution on this particular platform can some student come and speak so that they all feel that you really really you are thanking them for the effort that they have taken anybody who can unmute and speak and give your thanks it will be really amazing because it's just because uh, children are uh, you know benefited they are all giving their time and energy we have had three rounds of run through and they have been working on it i've been sharing ppt with me and they have been working for the last 3 4 weeks so i think they deserve to be uh, they deserve to feel that they are you are all grateful to them who is going to do that anybody volunteers you should never shy away for giving thanks that's an opportunity yes sanskriti yeah thank you ma'am uh hari mam uh, uh thank you so much uh, all three of you ma'am like it was very informative it was very we could like actually come across so many questions and we could actually answer those like we have recently uh, read all the all the modules of kpti and so we can actually relate and uh, like think about it and like actually use that knowledge and then solve the questions and then to many questions we had some other perspective but the answer would turn out to, to be something else so we actually learned a lot from that Uh, we are really looking forward to uh, get some more questions uh, based on uh, these chapters so that we can solve more uh, i would really thank uh, like to thank all three of you thank you so much thank you sanskruti and kazar board some ha hands is up um some chinmaya vidyalaya kazar board who's going to speak Uh, thank you so much for the session thank you all the three resource persons it was very nice and i like the interactive session the activities provided by ma'am and it was very fun to do and we are expecting more questions sample questions so we can work on all these and we are waiting for the next two sessions on the other two chapters thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much and uh, uh, do we need to include primary text sources as the part of the chapters article have yes, a question primary question uh, textbook as well because it has more uh, detailed topics thank you all so much and it's been wonderful uh, having you all here and once again gratitude to all three of you uh, sonna ma'am uh, veena ma'am and jay bharti ma'am for giving your valuable time and uh, uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot we will see how we can take it forward uh, so the children want the two more chapters also to be done let's see how we can figure it out ma'am sorry to in interrupt you ma'am gratitude goes only to you we are just instruments yeah. ஒரிஜினிங் பூர்ணமதாயிஷாந்தி